Hello, Mathies. Gatos here. Welcome to Multiplying Rational Expressions, Part 1 of 6.2. Before we get into that, we're going to talk and review 6.1, and I have two really good questions for you. So in this first question here, I'm given a rational expression that has been written in lowest terms. So in essence, this is kind of the answer to a question with these restrictions. I want to know what it was before it was simplified. So a little tip that I have for you is to examine the non-permissible values. The restrictions tell you the factors of the denominator because remember we cannot divide by zero. So if I have a restriction that x cannot equal negative two-thirds, that means my non-permissible value is negative two-thirds. So let's use that to find the factor. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 3 to get rid of that divide by 3. Then I'm going to add 2 to both sides. And I know that 3x plus 2 is one of my factors in the denominator. Let's go to my second restriction, which is that x cannot equal 4. So my non-permissible value is x equal 4. I'll subtract 4 from both sides, and I get a factor of x minus 4. So what that means is that whatever my rational expression was in the denominator, it had a factor of 3x plus 2 and a factor of x minus 4 before it was simplified. Now if we go back up here to when it was simplified, I did have a factor of 3 of x minus 4. I didn't have a factor of 3x plus 2 in my final answer, which tells me I had a factor of 3x plus 2 in the numerator that was simplified. And then I also have my factor of 3x plus 5. So let's just examine this right now before I go too far. So this I'm saying is my original expression. So I take my original expression, I factor it, then I would remove my common factors, and I would end up with my answer. So I know I'm on the right track. So all I have to do is now expand this to figure out what it was in this template form here. And they've given us two numbers here to kind of tell us if we're on the right track. So let's expand. 3x times 3x, 3x times 5, 2 times 3x, 2 times 5. In the denominator, 3x times x, 3x times negative 4, 2 times x, and 2 times negative 4. And then let's just group our like terms. So I'm going to have 9x squared, 15x and 6x is 21x plus 10 over 3x squared, negative 12x and 2x is negative 10x minus 8. Now, I just want to look at those template values. Notice I had a 21x. I look like I'm on the right track because there's a 21x. So that must mean that a is 9 and that b is 10. And then in the denominator, I had that value of negative 8, which I have here. So that tells me I'm on the right track. So my c value would be 3. And then my d value, remember I've already accounted for the negative, so I'm not going to say that d is negative 10, it is just simply 10. So my answer would be 9, 10, 3, 10. Okay, let's try another one. In this question here, the fraction on the left is simplified to give us the fraction on the right, but we're not given non-permissible values. So we're just going to kind of work backwards to figure out what the value of a is. So what I'm going to start doing is just factoring everything. So over here, I notice I have a greatest common factor of 3 that I'll take out. And that's about as far as I can go on the right side. So on the left-hand side, 6, 15, and 9 also have a GCF of 3, so I'll take that out as well. So I have 3, and then I'm going to factor this, and then it will be equal to 2x plus 1 over 3 times x minus 1. So factoring this, I know I have a 2x and an x. I'm going to have a 1 and a 3, and these are both negative. So I'm just going to double check 2x squared minus 2x minus 3x. Okay, that looks good. I factored that correctly. So because I have equality, which means the left side equals to the right side, let's just highlight what I have. I have a 3 here and a 3 here. I have an x minus 1 here and an x minus 1 here. So it looks like I'm good. 
on the left hand side it has to equal to the right hand side so notice on the right hand side i don't have a factor in the denominator of 2x minus 3 so that means that in the numerator i must have a factor of 2x minus 3 because they're going to have to cancel because it's not over here so originally i have that factor of 2x minus 3. And then if I look at my right hand side, I also need a factor of 2x plus 1. So I know this must have a factor of 2x plus 1 as well. So the expression that represents a, a will equal to 2x minus 3 times 2x plus 1. Or if one of the options is expanded, I could also expand it. Now if this was a written response question, I'm fine with you ending it there. But I just want you to recognize another answer it would be 2x times 2x, 2x times 1, negative 3 times 2x, negative 3 times 1, which is 4x squared minus 4x minus 3. So either one of those answers would be okay. So that's a little review of 6.1. Let's look at what we're going to do in 6.2, which is multiplying rational expressions. Part 2 of this video will be division. So let's think back and review how we multiplied fractions when we were learning them in junior high. So what we would do is we would multiply the numerators, 7 times 4. We would multiply the denominators together over 168 and then we would put our fraction in lowest terms so I would just take that fraction and I would divide it by its common factors or I can put it into my calculator and do a little math frac to it so I know that my answer in lowest terms is 1 over 6 but what I really want you to get is two things you multiply the numerators you multiply the denominators and then you reduce so let's take that idea to multiplying rational expressions with monomials. Monomial meaning one term. So first thing I want to do is look at my denominator. I have variables there, so there is a potential for division by zero. I need to state my restrictions. So my restrictions here, since they are both monomials and I can't divide by zero, my restriction is that y can't be zero and y squared can't be zero altogether that would just be y can't equal zero so remember my tip about monomials whenever you have monomials you will always have the restriction that the variable can't equal zero so now that i've stated my restrictions i can go ahead and multiply so 4x times 9 is 36x and in the denominator i have 3 times 8 which is 24 y times y squared is y cubed. So to reduce this, I would just have to reduce my number 36 over 24. I can't simplify my variables because I don't have common variables. So on the calculator, I can actually put that in lowest terms, which is 3 halves. So my final answer would be 3x over 2y cubed, where y cannot equal to 0. That would be my final answer. Now you guys know I'm a big fan of the check. Unfortunately on this question, we can't check it because we have two variables. So you can only check on the calculator when there is only one variable. And here we have x's and we also have y's. So we just have to be very careful and trust that we did that correctly. Let's try another one. So in this question here, I want to multiply and state my restrictions. So again, in the denominator, I have monomials. So my restriction is going to be, since you can't divide by zero, that x and y can't be zero. So let's go ahead and multiply. In the top, I have 4x squared multiplied by y squared. So that's going to be 4x squared y squared. All over in the denominator, 3 times 8 is 24 x times x is x squared, and then I have a y. So when I simplify, I divide numbers with numbers, x is with x, y with y. So 4 over 24, you could do that in your calculator, or see that it has a common factor of 4. So dividing each by 4, it would be 1 over 6. 
x squared and x squared, those are common, so x squared divided by x squared is 1. And then y squared over y, I have more y's in the numerator, and 2 take away 1 is 1 more in the numerator. So I can just write that as y over 6. I don't really need the 1 there. And again, because I have two variables, I can't check that on the calculator, so I have to be super careful that I've done that right. So my final answer, y over 6, where x and y can't be zero. I do both the restrictions even though my final answer doesn't have a variable in the denominator, but still state your original restrictions. Let's look at what happens when I have binomials and trinomials. So it's all about the factoring. I want you to factor the numerator and the denominator. State all your non-permissible values for the denominator only. And then you just multiply numerators together and denominators together. Don't distribute. Leave it in factored form. Remove all your common factors, not common terms, and leave your answer in factored form. Again, if you can check because there's only one variable, please check it on the calculator. So again, to summarize, we're going to factor, restrict, simplify. So let's try a question. So first thing I want to do is factor. So factoring first. So in the numerator, I have x minus 2, x plus 2, difference of squares. In the denominator, greatest common factor of x. And then that will be multiplied by x plus 5, x minus 4 over x plus 3, x minus 2. So I have now done all my factoring. Let's look at my restrictions. So I have one, two, three, four restrictions in the denominator. So in the words of Tim Hortons, I have a double-double. So my first one, x can't be zero. That's nice. x plus three can't be zero, x minus four, and x minus two. No particular order. Here I will subtract three from both sides. Here I will add four to both sides. Here I will add two to both sides. So my restrictions all together, I'm just going to put them in numeric order from smallest to biggest. Those are all my restrictions. Okay, now that I've done my restrictions, I am ready to simplify. So to simplify, I'm going to remove factors that are common to the numerator and denominator. So I have an x minus 2 and an x minus 2. I have an x minus 4 and an x minus 4. And it looks like that is it. So let's put it all together. I have x plus 2 times x plus 5 all over x times x plus 3 with this restriction here. So that should be my final answer if I've done it correctly. So let's check on our calculator by putting the original into y1, my answer into y2. You can see the check happens in the table. Notice we have some errors because those are based on the non-permissible values. So you can see an error at 0, 2, and 4 because those are my non-permissible values, but they equal everywhere else. So that tells me I've done the question correctly. Okay, let's try this one here. So again, factor, restrict, and simplify. So let's start with factor. So to factor, I'm going to take out a GCF of x, GCF of 4, and then I'm going to factor my trinomial all over 3 minus x. So this is going to be 2x and x, 4 and 1, add and subtract. I always like to check just to make sure I did that right, and it looks good. Okay, second thing we're going to do is our restrictions. So to look at your restrictions, here I have double trouble, two restrictions. Divide both sides by 4, add 1, divide by 2. And here I'm just going to add x to both sides. So my restrictions in numeric order from smallest to biggest is 1 half and 3. Okay, next step I just have to simplify. So I'm looking for common factors to the numerator and denominator. So I have a 2x minus 1, a 2x minus 1. Don't be tempted to get rid of this 4 with this 4 because this is not a 4, it's an x plus 4. Now it looks like I don't have anything else, but remember that shortcut I told you, same but opposite. 
Notice I have an x and a negative x. Negative 3, positive 3. Those factors are same but opposite. So they cancel to be negative 1, and the negative 1 goes in the numerator. So altogether, I have negative x times x plus 4 all over just the number 4. So again, let's check to see if we've done the question correctly. So my original goes into y1, my answer goes into y2, so original in blue, answer in red there, and the check always happens in the table. So with the exception of the non-permissible values, you can see y1 equals y2, so I know I did this question correctly. So to summarize, when you multiply fractions, multiply tops, multiply bottoms, state your restrictions, and simplify. And you don't be like this student who shows his teacher how well he understands fractions by doing half of his homework, because I know you're going to do all of it. Practice questions one to three, detailed solutions on D2L, then you can move on to your textbook solutions. So I hope this video helped, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.